Hello Steelers and welcome to this painting video where I'll be showing you how I go about painting these 1300 scale 3D printed First World War aircraft. These were printed for me by a friend and I used them in Algernon Pulls It Off, of which you can see some more videos on the rest of this channel. These are SE5As but the technique is going to work for any Royal Flying Corps or Royal Air Force aircraft of the First World War as they were all usually painted in one of two colours which were called PC10 and PC12. The first thing I do is fix the magnet onto the base of the aircraft using super glue and then some CA accelerator. I already have flight stands with magnets so I know which way the polarity runs and I use a flight stand with a stack of magnets to remind me when I'm doing this stage. With the magnet in place I'll then use a spot of PVA glue to fix the aircraft to a piece of plastic. The plastic is non-porous so the PVA will only hold the plane in place and it can be easily pulled off and cleaned up when the time is right. Leaving the PVA to set overnight, I give the aircraft a priming coat of white paint. You could do this with an airbrush or even a rattle cam primer, but the latter might be a little bit heavy handed. I just used a smallish brush as the aircraft are so small. The underside of British aircraft had doped linen. This was to protect the fabric and it gave it a yellowish colour. So for this I used Vallejo's dark sand. I'll put a list of paints used in the description below. Again, I use a brush for this, but there's no reason why you couldn't use an airbrush to get this as a smoother application. Then, using a small brush, I paint the landing gear in brown violet. This is a pretty good match for PC-10 without getting too hung up on it. And then very carefully, I will paint the tyres in black. You could do these in grey if you wish, but I wanted them to stand out a little bit. If you want to paint the hubs in a different colour, now is also the time to do this. And then it's time to protect the underside with a gloss varnish. Normally I don't double up on my varnish but in this case I will. On the underside it helps protect the paint on the magnet and it just toughens up the model as well. So when this is dry I go over again with a matte varnish to dull the gloss down. You'll notice that I don't add decals to the underside. This is because you'll never see them in a game so I think it's a waste of decals. But if you want to go that extra mile and add them then please do. When the varnish is dry I pull the aircraft off the plastic piece and I'll clean the rest of the glue off the wing. Then I put the plane onto one of my spare flight stands for painting the top side. The basic paint here is brown violet again, replicating that PC10 colour. And this goes on all the upper surfaces. Don't worry about getting paint on the underside as we can come back with the dark sand later and clean up any overspill. So the next thing to tackle is a red, white and blue flash on the tailplane. This is done with a small stripe of white covering the area of the rudder. Next, using a small brush and a steady hand, we paint in the red and the blue stripes on the outer side of the white. You can always go back here and cut in the white again to neaten up when you've done. And again, don't worry about overspill as you can go back with a brown violet and neaten things up again. For the wing struts, the pilot's head and the propeller spinner, I use beige brown as it's close enough to the colour of treated wood and also the leather of the flying helmet. Sometimes struts were painted different colour as identification, so you can do this as well if you like. Once again, don't worry about overspill as you can clean up again with brown violet when you've finished. I didn't film it, but I'll also paint the guns, the radiator, the exhaust pipes in black. Once I have neatened up the areas of the paint spill and it's dried, I then give the model a coat of gloss varnish again. And then we're on to the final stage of adding decals. I got these from I-94 who do a great range of First World War decals for 1300 aircraft. It's simply a case of putting the decals in water for a few seconds and then using a small brush to position the decal where you require it. Finally, I add a drop or two of Microsol. This softens the decal and it also helps them conform to the aircraft's shape. When the water for the decals has dried and they're set in place, I then paint matte varnish over the model to actually seal in the decals and also dull down that gloss varnish. And that's them completed. You'll notice I haven't added any weathering as I think these are a bit too small and it might cover up some of the paint. But if that's something you want to do then just go for it. This method is quick and if you do a handful of aircraft at once you'll soon have a good number completed. These are just in the basic livery. But there is nothing stopping you from adding squadron signifiers, personal paint schemes and many other things. Although in the RFC and the RAF, personalising aircraft was actually frowned upon. So thank you for watching this video and if you've enjoyed it please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and also drop me a comment below.
Also, check out my Patreon and my Ko-fi if you'd like to help the channel out, and I will see you in the next video.